Yes. Yes. No. No, I'm not. It's pointless that you scream at me. I'm not going to wear your helmet. Because I don't like it. Listen, I don't care. It was fashionable back then. I still don't like it. I'm not going to wear it. Well, you're not in the position of saying that, are you? You're not in charge anymore. All right, then. Bye. <sighs> Sorry, lads. Oh, no, it was uh, Henry VIII. I know. Fans. Greetings, noble ones. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today we're going to talk about the most incredible, fascinating, beautiful, or sometimes dreadful helmets in Europe. I've already made a similar video, um, but on the samurai and the most incredible and strange and bizarre samurai helmets, and you will find a link in the description below. And similarly to that, I'd like to first do a little introduction to talk about uh, why I chose these specific helmets, and then I will we will have a showcase of these uh, helmets that I have selected myself that I find to be um, incredible, astonishing, bizarre, strange, odd. And then we will uh, finish up with a little bit of, with just my personal opinion opinion on these. Now, for Japan, I mostly covered Edo period samurai helmets. And the reason why I chose Edo period specifically is because Edo period is very different as far as the production of armor is concerned to Sengoku period and, and, and so forth. The reason why is because Edo period was a period of peace. And during Edo Jidai, people, samurai were still wearing armor, but it was mostly to show off uh, their rank, how wealthy they were, their social status. So armor in Edo period, as I have talked, as I have mentioned on that video, um, is mostly armor that is still functional. But you know the helmets have got these in incredible decorations, that, and I showed many interesting helmets back there in on that video, um, which are there not for functional purposes. They are not meant to be used in battle. Now the sort of helmets that I've chosen today, uh, pertaining to medieval European um, times, uh, are similar in. In a way, meaning that we are going to focus mostly into the 16th century and the 17th century, so, so the 1500s and the 1600s. So we are basically in the Renaissance. So why did I choose this period? Um, we do know that the, uh, for example, plate armor reaches its peak in the 15th century, particularly after 1420, we've got the development of the full harness or full plate harness. But the 1500s, so the 16th century, is where where you have the beginning of a new startling change as far as taste and fashion is concerned. In 16th century armor, and particularly the helmets, you see that um, things have changed completely. Not, not just the helmets though, for example, we will see some helmets on this video that are incredible and some of which belong to a specific Italian uh, style which is called armor or armatura all'antica. All'antica in Italian meaning uh, the ancient way, uh, the way, in the way of the ancients. I think that would be the best translation, the old-fashioned way. And it's a sort of armor that is mostly decorative and mostly used for parades or as gifts etc. Um, and that's the sort of armor that I think is similar in a way to the Edo period helmets. I think they are comparable, very comparable, although there is a big difference as far as the centuries are concerned, almost 200 years. Um, but the armor all'antica, northern Italian armor all'antica, is the sort of armor, and particularly helmets, that wants to re revoke repropose uh, ancient thematics like Hercules, like the Gorgon, like you know, heroes and gods of ancient Roman and Greek era. But it's amazing because it's using uh, 16th century technology. So it's these are masterpieece of art but some are really weird, so we will get into those as well. Also, because I haven't only focused on Alantica, there will be many Alantica helmets here uh, showed. I've also chosen specific gifts, and, and of course, among these, we will have Henry VIII helmet, because 
how can you not show that helmet in when we talk about bizarre European helmets? So, um, but if you look, so these are some of the helmets and the reason why I chose Arma Alantica because it's really, really uh, interesting. It's a new fashion, but the new fashion in the 16th century wasn't only that. It wasn't only the idea of Alantica, uh, Arma Alantica made in Italy to talk about ancient times or to sort of give that idea perspective. Uh, for example, if we look at the sabatons, though there is a big difference between 15th century uh, full plate sabatons and um, 16th century full plate uh, sabaton, so we're talking about the armor of the foot. Um, if we look at, 16th, uh, at the 15th century, we see this very elongated and pointy shoes. Why? Because that was the fashion. It was the fashion in the upper echelons of society. Um, so much so, and that styled arrived in armor as well. So sometimes they weren't completely attached, most of the times they were completely attached. So they weren't a solid part of the sabaton, there was something that could be attached, perhaps for when you were riding or mounting your horse, and of course when you dismount your horse and you walk, that, that would be a bit of a problem walking, and so because of the, you know, the metal points sticking on the ground, so they could be removed. But in the 16th century, the situation changes completely. 16th century armorers, and in general fashion, is not really looking at very subtle and, and fine um, shapes like they were in the 15th century. No, they are looking for more physicality. And physicality means a different shape. So for example, we've got these sort of bear claw uh, shapes. So these completely opposite sabatons, they're completely cut and rectangular with a rectangular shape, which gives it an idea of solid strength. And if you look at the upper part of armor in 16th century, then you see that it's bigger. It's looking for more masculine shapes. You still keep the that sort of um, thin waist uh, that we have had since the 14th, late 14th century, but that's because of functionality. But apart from that, the majority the armor now is stronger it looks sturdier. And it is sturdier in a way, because if you look at German armor, uh, for example, the um, Gothic and Maximilian armor, then you find fluting, and fluting is there to increase strength. But please notice, fluting is not found in the greaves. So again, this is why I'm saying, the majority of cases, you see these big differences in the upper part of the armor. But anyways, enough for the introduction. Let's check these helmets out.
Okay, well I hope that you enjoyed these helmets and the epic music that I chose. And I'd like to know which one of these helmets was your favourite. I purposely may put a number next to each helmet so that you can easily tell me I liked number 4, I liked number 5, I liked number 6. In my case, my favourite was number 5. I think it's absolutely beautiful because some of these helmets look that, like this one here looks dreadful it's like whoa if i find someone wearing that on the battlefield mamma mia makes me you know makes you think of an undead warrior that yes of course it does have its purposes i suppose from as far as psychological warfare is concerned but this helmet to me looks epic heroic i don't know it's just that sort of shape that i personally prefer this one was number two Okay then, well let me know what you think in the comments below. If you liked this video, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.